Welcome to USMLEFastTrack.com. The section we're going to talk about today is from First Aid for the USMLE Step 1, 2013 Edition. Page 555. What is restrictive lung disease? Restrictive lung disease is a category of extrapulmonary, pleural, and parenchymal respiratory diseases that restrict lung expansion. Restrictive lung diseases would then lead to decreased lung volume, increased work on breathing, and inadequate ventilation and or oxygenation. So basically, in restrictive lung disease, the patient does not have any problems emptying their lungs, but because of restrictions on the lungs, they just have less lung volume. So to summarize that once again, restrictive lung disease is a restricted lung expansion that causes a decrease in lung volume. Therefore, there's going to be a decrease in the forced vital capacity, and there is going to be a decrease in total lung capacity. Describe the pulmonary function test observed in restrictive lung disease. The pulmonary function test is going to show FEV1 and FVC ratio of more than 80%, which is sort of normal. And the reason for this is because patients don't have a problem emptying their lungs. They just have less in their lungs due to the restrictions. What are the two subclassification of restrictive lung disease? Restrictive lung disease can be further subdivided into extrinsic and intrinsic type. Extrinsic type is commonly due to poor breathing mechanism, which has an extra pulmonary cause with peripheral hypoventilation and a normal alveolar arterial gradient. The intrinsic type, on the other hand, is due to interstitial lung diseases. It has a pulmonary cause. It leads to lower diffusion capacity, and this commonly happens due to fibrosis, and therefore there is going to be an increase in the alveolar arterial gradient. Give some examples of poor breathing mechanism that would lead to restrictive lung disease. Restrictive lung disease can happen due to poor muscular effort of breathing, such as in polio and myasthenia gravis. It can also happen due to poor structural apparatus, which causes restriction on the lung, such as with scoliosis and morbid obesity. And morbid obesity is one of the more common causes that leads to restrictive lung disease. Name all the causes of intrinsic restrictive lung disease. The intrinsic causes of restrictive lung disease includes acute respiratory distress syndrome, neonatal respiratory distress syndrome, which is a hyaline membrane disease, pneumoconiosis such as anthracosis, silicosis, and asbestosis. Sarcoidosis can lead to restrictive lung disease, in which there is bilateral hilar lymphadenopathy, non-caseating granulomas, increase in angiotensin-converting enzyme and calcium, also, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis can lead to restrictive lung disease. In this, there is a repeated cycle of lung injury followed by wound healing, and this increases collagen deposition. Other intrinsic causes of restrictive lung disease include good pasture syndrome, granulomatosis with polyangitis, which is also known as Wegner's granulomatosis, Langerhans cell histiocytosis, hypersensitivity pneumonitis, drug toxicities with bleomycin, busulfan, amiodarone, and methotrexate can all lead to restrictive lung disease. For more information on this topic, click on the link in the description section below. For a full USMLE Step 1 review, be sure to check us out at usmlefasttrack.com where we help you review the entire first aid for the USMLE Step 1 with high quality videos and hundreds of detailed pictures for a better understanding of the material. So to learn from the best USMLE review book, be sure to check us out at usmlefasttrack.com.